Okay, so in this video, we are going to be playing with the SAM 4E Explained Pro board. Um, this is a board I use in a number of classes. It is a ARM, um, ARM board. It's got Ethernet and CAN, um, along with some RAM and other peripherals. Um, it's from Atmel. Uh, couple things to note on the board. There are two USB connections. One over here. This is the target USB connection. That's not the one we want to hook up to. We want to make sure we're hooked into the debug USB connection. And remember when you're plugging things in, just kind of give um, that port a little bit of extra support. When you're plugging and unplugging, um, these are fairly fragile connectors. They're fairly easy to pull the connector off of the development board. I think it's, to me, it's a slight design flaw on the board, but other than that, I love these boards. They're, they're fairly nice. So we'll get started. We're gonna create a new project. And to do that, we need um, Microchip Studio, formerly Atmel Studio. So when you fire up Microchip Studio, if you have the board plugged in correctly, Microchip Studio should recognize your board, and mine does. There's my SAM4E Explained Pro. I can go ahead and close that. We can get to the start page, and I can just say, let's create a new project. Now, the type of project I want to create is a GCC C ASF board project. I'm going to put this someplace useful. Right now I've got it going into my Git hub or my Git channel for my YouTube channel um, under a directory called Sam4E Explain Pro and we've got a Hello World folder. And then we're just going to name the project. We'll call it Hello Free RTOS uh, World. We'll go ahead and hit OK here and this is going to bring up our board selection. Um, we want to select by board, and in the filter, I can just type in SAM4E, and right there on the bottom is our 4E Explain Pro. Go ahead and hit OK on that. And here we have our project created. I'm going to go ahead and open up the main. It's the template. Um, does the same kind of thing we're going to do, actually, on the... Uh, for our toss version of this, basically if you press the button, it turns on the LED. Um, I always like to build my projects just to make sure everything got created okay before I start messing with things. We'll go ahead and do that. Here at the bottom, you can see our build was started and then it was successful. So we're good to go. All right, the next step, we need to go get free RTOS. Couple different ways to do that. Um, go to freeartos.org. Um, this is the homepage for Free RTOS, and there's a number of resources on here. I would bookmark this site, right? You can get the kernel, you can get the API reference. You're going to be using this API reference a lot. Um, but the big thing is we can download Free RTOS. We have a couple options. We have the normal build or the long-term support. The normal build has some other options. Um, it's a little bit dated. This version was released in 21. If we want the latest and greatest, we can click here and go to the GitHub link. This will take us to FreeRTOS's GitHub. And if you scroll down through the instructions, um, you'll see that uh, GitHub uses recursive modules. So in order to clone it, we need that command right there. Git clone the address dash dash recurse submodule. So we're going to just copy that command into our um, system. And then I'm going to go ahead and here's my folder, my hello world folder. I'm just going to right click and say, give me a git bash here. And then I can paste in that command and we can go ahead and clone the free RTOS repo. All right, we have free RTOS cloned. We can now minimize that. And now I have a free RTOS folder here. 
and we want to go into the regular free R toss and the source directory. Uh, now, before we get going too far, we need to create a directory structure for free R toss in our project. And I'm going to do that just by right clicking on my source folder and I'm going to say add um, new folder. That first folder we're going to call free RTOS and under free RTOS we're going to need a couple folders. So let's add a folder. We'll call this one include um, and then we need one called portable. Um, so we've got include and portable and then under portable we need um, a folder called GCC and under GCC we need another folder called arm underscore CM4F and then also under portable we need one more folder and we'll call this mem Mang for memory manager. So there's our directory structure. The next step is to actually copy the files we need. We don't need all of FreeRTOS for what we're doing today. So we're just going to copy the files we need. We need to grab um, list.c, q.c, task.c, and timers.c. We're going to just bring those and drop them right in that FreeRTOS folder. Make sure the plus symbol is shown there, and that will copy the files into that folder. Next, we're gonna go into include, and basically take all the header files and drop them into the includes folder. Um, next, we gotta go to the portable folder. Um, let's go to GCC, ARM, CM4F. We need to grab both of those and drag them into that arm cm4f and then lastly we need to go to the memory manager folder and we want to grab heap 5. so there we go there is all of our free rtos sources brought into our project um, and there we go with that piece. I don't need to open heat five. So the next step is we need to um, set up our project to work with those new directories. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to right click on my Hello FreeRTOS World project. We're going to go to properties. And under tool chain, a couple different places we got to change some stuff. The first is under ARM GNU C compiler. I'm going to go to directories. I'll hit my little add button here. And basically, we want to go to source, free RTOS, um, include. Select that. Make sure relative path is selected. And then we also want to go to. Go up one, go to source, free RTOS, portable, GCC. Um, there's a header file in that directory as well. And the other place we need to do this is under the gar um, ARM GNU assembler. Um, we just need to add those same two directories to the assembler. Um, that's not necessary on all versions, but it doesn't hurt to do it just in case. So we'll add those same two directories here. Freertos include. Again, making sure we have that relative path. And the other one. Source, FreeRTOS, Portable, GCC, and that ARM folder. So there we go. We can save our project settings. And now 
we are ready to start doing some modifications to our code. So I'm just going to delete everything that's in main.c and we'll start kind of over. Um, first off, we're going to need some system includes. Um, we will need asf.h, that's the underlying libraries for the Atmel Explain Pro board. Um, we're going to need standard int and standard bool. Um, then we're going to need some free RTOS includes. Now I'm not going to use all of these this time, but for future expansion it just helps to go ahead and bring those in. They become system level includes because we modified the project to include those paths for the system. That is freertos.h, that's the general header file for freertos, uh, task.h, timers, queue, and semaphore. Um, we'll just add a section here for my includes for later. Um, we're going to need some defines as well. Um, and the first define we're going to need has to do with the um, heap. So I'm just going to paste this in here. Um, basically, if we're using our board, oops, we want to do those defines. Otherwise, we're going to just have an error. Um, so we need those. Um, let's create a spot here for function prototypes. Um, I need um, a placeholder for that e stack. It's an external variable. It's created elsewhere. So we'll just do our extern there. Um, we need a main. Uh, there we go. And that should do most everything we need to start with. Um, now the next thing we got to create is the configuration file for FreeRTOS. Um, so I'm going to just come up here to my source. I'm going to right click and say add new item. Um, it's a header file. And we'll call this FreeRTOS config.h um, and basically I'm just going to delete everything that's in there and I have one already written up that we will paste in um, this will be in the repo for you to grab so I'm not going to wor be worried about you just um, trying to read it um, it's just configuring up for your RTOS, the options we want set, and things like that. Well, as you do things in free RTOS, you're going to modify this file a lot anyway. Um, but bringing in that uh, free RTOS.h is going to require us to create some functions back in main. Um, so we're going to need a couple function prototypes. Um, we'll paste these here. We need one for initial is uh, doing this mis miscellaneous initialization, and we need one for initializing the heap. Um, and then there's also a couple other functions we're going to have to define. So let's start with that miscellaneous initialization, since it's the top one. Um, right now, it's fairly simple. Um, we got to initialize the SAM board, so we're going to initialize the clock, the board initialization. Um, we're going to call the heap initialization function, and then set up our peripherals for use. Um, that heap initialization function will be next. Um, this is basically just initializing our heap using that uh, memmang5. Um, it's the requirements that we need for that. And there's a couple more, um, three more functions that we have to define. These are set by our um, free RTOS config. Um, we need the, the assert called, so we need a place for 
um, a trap, basically, if an assert is called. Um, basically, all it does is it comes in and disables interrupts, and then basically does a while true loop. Um, the next thing, we need a malloc failed hook, and that's just going to call the assert. And then we need a stack overflow hook, um, and that's also just basically going to disable interrupts and do a while true loop. So these are just catches, if you will, um, if something goes horribly, horribly wrong in our system. Um, so with that, let's add a few things to main. Let's call our board initialization. Um, and then let's go ahead and start the free RTOS scheduler. And then we should have a while true loop, even though we should never actually oops, get there because um, the scheduler should never end once we start it. So that's all well and good, but we need to actually um, create something for it to do, right? So let's go through and add a couple more files. Um, I like separating my tasks out from main, so I'm just going to add a new um, item, include file. I'm going to call this my tasks.h. <laughs> and we need one more new item. This will be the C file for that, and we'll just call it my tasks.c. Fairly straightforward. Um, let's go to my tasks.h. All we're going to do in my tasks.h is define a single task, and I'm just going to call that my button task. Right, so void my button task, and there's the parameters we're expecting. I can save that. And now, of course, um, we need to define what we need for that. <coughs> um, first, oops. First things first. We're going to be controlling buttons and LEDs, so we need ASF.H. Um, we need to include our header file, my tasks.h, and then we need our function, right? Void my button task. And that is a void star PV parameters. Now, I'm not actually going to be sending any parameters, but it's required that I catch them. Um, now, the big thing about a task is it shouldn't end on its own. You have to actually end them. So we're going to do a um, while true loop here. Um, I should probably include standard bool.h as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And then um, we're just going to do some simple code here. Um, we have a question. Is the button pressed? Right? And we can do that with an if loop. Um, the way we read the buttons is with an io port underscore get pin level function. And that's going to take um, the define, which is already defined for our onboard. And that's io or button zero underscore pin. We can say if that is equal to button zero active. So in other words, the button is pressed. 
All right, so based on whether our button is set or active or not active, we're going to do one of two things. So if the button is active, then we want to turn on our LED. And instead of using IO port get pin level, we're going to do a IO port set pin level. So IO port underscore <coughs> set pin level. And this one takes two parameters. First is the pin, which is LED underscore zero underscore pin. And then what we want to do, we want to activate it. So that is LED underscore zero underscore active. Um, and I'm just going to hit control C and paste this down here. Um, and we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to make it inactive. So I'll save that. We got one more thing to do, and that's back in main, right? We've initialized our board. We've started the scheduler, but we actually haven't fired up that task that we just wrote. And the way we do that is with xtask create, which is an API function. Um, so I'm just going to kind of cut and paste this and then we'll go through what this function does. Um, let me clean this up a little bit. And then we'll kind of go through the parameters. So X task create will create um, a task to be scheduled by our scheduler. And the first parameter of that is a function pointer to the function that we're going to call. Um, next is a human readable name for that task. I just called it my button task. Next, we got to give it how big of a stack that task will have. And I just use the pre-configured minimal stack size um, for that. Next, like I said earlier, um, we can take parameters in. I'm not using any parameters for this one, so we're just going to send null. Um, next would be the priority of that task. And then we just set that to a 1, so it's slightly above idle. And then the last one is a place to store a task handle. I'm not going to do anything with that task handle. So I just sent null, which is absolutely legal. So the next step here is to go ahead and build this project again. And we should build just fine. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit my hollowed out play button, which is starting without debugging. And in the meantime, I'm going to pop up our camera. We can see that it's currently erasing the flash on the board. As soon as that's done, it will write the new flash and then we are up and running. Now, a couple things. The first button here, this is the reset button. That's not the one we want to press. It's the next one over and that is switch zero. If I press switch zero, we can see that the LED lights up. And when I let go of switch zero, the LED turns off. So we now have a task up and running on our board. We have free our tasks running on our board. And we've basically done a hello world where we check a button and turn on an LED. So that is the basics of getting free our tasks running on a SAM 4E Explained Pro. Um, if you like these videos and they're helpful to you, please like and subscribe. Thank you.